Good morning, people. Can you hear me? Please put a thumbs up if you can hear me. Excellent. Thank you very much. So today we'll be discussing. Before we enter into this topic, these are the things that I have to show you. So we are discussing. OK, our discussion on the near original questions. I'm trying my best to bring the best of the questions for you. I have discussed with a lot of people. They can be errors. I request you to be patient. They can be errors in the questions itself, and they can be errors in the answers also. So I would request you to be patient. What I'm trying to do here is to help you reach out to the best kind of answers possible. At the same time, the question should be able to give you an insight into what kind of questions you can expect in the next session of AIMS. So the next session of AIMS should not be very difficult for you. If at all, there is a session called We'll see how many of you can give me the right answer. <laughs> if you have any question, please ask me. Do not worry about it. See, please don't hate me. I'm trying here the best to help you. This is a free session. I want every one of you to learn something from this class and go home. When you learn something, you will be very happy about it. If you had written the exam, it's OK. If you haven't written the exam, it's OK. Cross-linking fixative was asked. Excellent. Both can be understood. See the question, Ija Pandey. I'm very happy with your extraordinary work here. You're speaking about cross-linking, right? That is what I'm going to discuss today. So tell me the answer for this given question. See, your sanitizer may have 72% alcohol, but 72% alcohol is not the only content. It will also contain glutaraldehyde and other kind of isopropyl alcohol. Are you following this, Rocky? Rocky? Sorry, somebody asked for the first question. Rocky, you are having multiple combinations. That is why it is useful. OK, so the right answer is acetaldehyde. Please understand, osmium tetroxide is wonderful fixative when it comes to electron microscopy. Ethanol is a wonderful fixative when it comes to slideshows for light microscopy. Formaldehyde is the most commonly used, most commonly used fixative ever. Now, what exactly is the fixative? Previously, I had asked this quiz question. I had asked a quiz question. Some people might not have understood it. Some people might not have liked it. I asked them if, for example, I'm asking you, best fixative is actually osmium tetroxide. So for EMS tetroxide, listen carefully. I had asked a quiz question in the past. There is a relationship between what I'm going to ask you now and for this answer. When will you like your dosa very well? When the dosa is bright white in color, when the dosa is bright white in color or golden yellow in color, which one would you prefer? golden yellow among these two which kind of dosa would you prefer the bright white dosa or the golden yellow dosa so you will accept that golden yellow dosa is thousand times more tastier than that of bright white right the reason being a chemical reaction called as amadori rearrangement and that amadori rearrangement is also called as maillard reaction maillard reaction speaks about the formation of a cross linking between that of aldehyde and the amino groups present in the i repeat when i'm trying to make a dosa dosa will be made up of 60 percent carbohydrates and 30 percent of proteins the proteins will contain amino acids and those amino acids will give you the amino group so the carbohydrate contains aldehyde group and the amino group of proteins are supposed to make a link called as aldemine linkage and this aldemine linkage after formed will make the whole food substances extremely tastier. Now look at this part here. I'm going to tell you the theory part. Osmium tetroxide is traditionally used in electron microscopy, both as fixative and heavy metal state. While ethanol is a non-additive precipitant fixative, formaldehyde is a non-coagulating additing fixative, but acetaldehyde is the only one, acetaldehyde is the only one who is ineffective to act as Acetaldehyde is the only one who is ineffective to act as a fixative. Acetaldehyde cannot act as a fixative. Now, you can look at the theory part later when you have time. Look at the chemical reaction here. When I speak about formaldehyde, when I speak about glutaraldehyde also, you can have this combination. The protein with a H, with a HCHO, will form a protein with an formaldehyde. Now, that formaldehyde will form an aldemine linkage. This aldemine linkage is the one who is capable of causing peptide linkages and methylene groups. This is the chemistry behind the fixation and the best fixator will be formaldehyde and the one who will never be involved in the fixation would be acetaldehyde please understand why i chose acetaldehyde is because you can have osmium tetroxide acting as a fixative in the electron microscopy ethanol has a fixative action formaldehyde is the best fixative but acetaldehyde is not at all a fixative so i would choose d 
and if at all the extra statement called as cross linking is added the best fixative will again be formaldehyde never a fixative would be acetaldehyde again i will choose acetaldehyde as the answer i hope you understood this question if you have any question you can raise it also now look at the remaining part here this is additional information for you to answer in the next aims exam formic acid Evans Krajan strain, Christensen strain, Gooding and Stewart strains are the different kinds of decalcifier used. Why should you go for decalcifier? Whenever you have any kind of fixation, calcium abnormal accumulation can happen, which can alter your test results. So you have to add a decalcifier, which is capable of removing the calcium so the view can be better. Always remember formic acid, citric acid, distilled water, formic acid, formate and distilled water, formic acid, formaldehyde and distilled water are the three major methods by which I can go for using formaldehyde to go for fixation. Okay, all these are extra information. You can download this PDF file after the class is over. It might be helpful for you if you want to prepare for the next AIMS exam. Okay, gloves are disposed in which colored bag? This is a very simple question. It's not generally a microbiology question. I just added it for the sake of SPM. Try to go for the Rahul Raj is using biopsy. Who's uh, who's using biopsy, Rahul Raj? Which question are you talking about? Rahul Raj, can you please help me with your question? I'm not able to understand. Who's using biopsy are you talking about? I'll try to answer. How and where will the PDF be available? See, after the class is over, if you come back to the class once again, 30 minutes after the class is over, the PDF file will be downloadable immediately below the particular video. Former question. Latex gloves was given. It is latex gloves or disposable gloves. Whatever the gloves would be, you can use the red bag. The red bag is the right answer. So for those people, uh, Rahul Raj, for the previous question, in case of biopsy, in case of biopsy, the best would be formaldehyde. For the previous question, Rahul Raj, for the biopsy, the best would be formaldehyde. Okay, now this is the most confusing question. There is no right answer for this question. I repeat here, there is no correct answer for this question because the world is still contemplating. The whole world is still contemplating how to run this particular activity. Now, there are many people who have given me different kinds of questions. Some people said they're asking you for the COVID-19 lab safety. So the second question, instead of ethanol, if it was methanol, and instead of acetaldehyde, if it was glutaraldehyde, then answer. Second question, instead of ethanol, if it was methanol, and instead of acetaldehyde, if it was glutaraldehyde, still I will choose glutaraldehyde more than that of methanol, because methanol, even though it is dangerous, it can be helpful for minimal amount of fixation. In those laboratories, ethanol is not available. Methanol can be used. Glutaraldehyde is less common than methanol, so I'll choose glutaraldehyde. Is that okay, Dracula King? I will choose glutaraldehyde. Dracula King, this is for you. Okay, now let me tell you about this condition. When we speak about biosafety level, some people, COVID culture in cell line was asked, this is what you're saying. Some people are very strongly saying that they're trying to make a vaccine. That is why I'm trying to tell you whatever correct recall is isolating cell culture. Okay, no problem. So the most important thing here is we are looking for all possibilities of the question that is given here. If you say it is cell line culture, there is one student who is promising that it is supposed to be a vaccine. If vaccine is not there also, the concept is still the same. Why? Because you first have to go for cell line culture. From the cell line culture, you will be able to extradit the concept called as vaccination because you are trying to take up the antigen of the coronavirus to convert it into a vaccine, right? So you will be looking for the CDC recommendations and the world recommendations for how to maintain the biosafety level. Now, let me give you the options here. Do not answer this question. Let me look at the options here. The procedures that concentrate the viruses such as precipitation or membrane filtration can be performed in BSL-2 state laboratory. I repeat, if at all you just want to go for concentration of viruses, you're not trying to allow the virus to multiply. That just the virus's number should increase. It means when you take a sample, in that sample, the dilution part can be removed. The concentration part is maintained. So when the virus numbers are supposed to be increased dramatically without any kind of replication. This is the difference. Listen very carefully. You're not trying to allow the virus to replicate to increase in number. 
yes shaukik and that is i'm coming there just give me some amount of time i'll come back to that part i'm speaking about the concentration of virus listen very carefully concentration of virus is not the same as cell culture in case of cell culture you're trying to look for the increase in the number of viruses by replication in case of concentration the samples useless component has been removed or dilution component has been removed so that the relative number of viruses is increasing not the actual number of viruses so if you're going for concentration bsl2 laboratory can be done but if at all you want to go for cell culture and initial characterization of viral agents, then it would be SARS-CoV-2's BSL-3 laboratory. So the most adorable answer for this question can be BSL-3. Now, there was a question raised by someone else. And to answer that question only, I have brought in this biosafety level also. This is the standard protocol that is followed for all biosafety level 1. Now, if it is level 1, no contamination, the organism is known, unlikely to cause disease. Example is E. coli. When will you do BSL-2? If you know the containment is required, moderate risk and the disease is of varying severity how influenza can be dangerous and kill a person in some kind of situation it can be absolutely safe for some people hiv is a known kind of virus unless you have any kind of predisposing factor you will not suffer from hiv Lyme's disease is not a highly risk area it's a moderate risk area but when you come for tuberculosis you are classical understanding that there is a high risk of transmission but if it is basal 4 you go for ebola virus how did ebola virus get bsl4 because Ebola virus is capable of causing life-threatening disease. Seriously predisposing or potentially lethal disease is tuberculosis. Ebola is life-threatening disease. Right now, we do not actually have classified SARS-CoV-2 as life-threatening or not. We are seeing life-threatening activity. But the most important categorization is it is a pandemic. So the moment SARS-CoV-2 can be brought into the same category of Ebola virus, <coughs> there is a possibility it can come under BSL-4. But till now, the answer would be BSL-3. So this is for the answer raised by someone who spoke about Ebola virus. If it is Ebola virus, it is BSL-4. Till now, right now, the answer can be BSL-3. Let's go for the next question. Oh, okay, just look at the part here. Highlights of COVID-19 lab safety. All procedures must be performed based on risk assessment. If at all you want to perform the procedure, risk assessment is important. Then non-propagative diagnostic lab work can actually be conducted at a level 2 activity that is non-propagative please understand non-propagative is the right word you will be going for not that is nucleic acid amplification test the answer can be biosafety level 2 but if at all the work is propagative it means the number of viruses are going on increasing from the central area it keeps on moving in the peripheral area then you have to go for the containment in the term of bsl3 so because of two complex concepts i have brought in the answer it can be bsl3 as of now now let's look at this particular picture. This picture was a part of molecular biology. So anybody can claim the growth for this particular picture. A biochemist also will try to answer this. A microbiologist also will try to answer this. An immunologist also will try to answer this. The question was about, they wanted to know who is the conjugate. This is ELISA. This process is ELISA. In the ELISA, they wanted to look for the conjugate. They had given the color coding. This was one color. The green color was one color. The red was one color. The blue was one color. Yes, it is a sandwich ELISA. So they wanted to know which among the colors would be the conjugate. Remember, in ELISA, the conjugate is always the enzyme or the radioactive substance who is capable of giving out a particular change in the answer. When the antigen is present or the antibody is present, that particular conjugate will give you color by activating the chemical reaction. So here it can be alkaline phosphatase or it can be horse radish peroxidase. Horse radish peroxidase. So here the question would be HRP. I did not know the exact wordings for this and I did not know what were the options. So that's why I'm telling you this is the picture. I'm going to erase all the annotations here. So they asked for the conjugate. The conjugate is HRP. In this picture, it is hot status peroxidase. In other possibilities, it can be alkaline phosphatase. Let's go for the next question. Among the following drugs, which is the antifungal drug that exhibits both anti-inflammatory and anti-pruritic activity? Give me the answer, people. Yes, very good, Chidanan. Just try to go for the poll. The poll will tell you where exactly you stand. See, in this class, I'm very sure some of you might have gone for the exam. Some might have not gone for the exam. We, whatever it may be, try to answer through the poll and see how exactly you can flourish. See where exactly you stand in this group of people. Nobody will know where exactly you stand unless you are in the top 10. So this is a very simple way and an invisible way of seeing. Yeah, be it a topical drug or be it an intravenous drug, whatever the thing you speak about. Here we are talking about the presence of the organism's drug, which is capable of giving you antipyroidic effect. We'll see how many of you have given the answer. Yes. So 40% have given the right answer. Sai Shashank is on top. Rocky is on second. Rajesh is on third. Very good going people. Remember one thing. 
ketoconazole is almost out of date because it has been in the use for the last 20 years. But sertoconazole is the drug of choice for two reasons. One is it has a very good anti-inflammatory action. It has an antifungal action. But why is it capable of showing antipyretic action? Beta topical agent, it can be very effective in decreasing the cytokine waves. I repeat once again, this sertoconazole has been proven effect on decreasing the cytokine release and those cytokine release are known for inflammatory mediation and for that reason alone, it has been very effective. Please understand if you're practicing as a physician at some place, if you're just an MBBS doctor or an MD doctor, whatever it is, if you're practicing when a patient is coming to you with groin infection and he says he cannot actually stop scratching the itch, the itch is always present then the best drug you can give him would be sertoconazole. Please don't ask him to go for 4-derma. Have you come across the drug called as 4-derma? There is a 4-derma as a, what to say, it's a brand name. People say that there are betamethasone, beclamethasone in it, and it is also containing the antifungal agent. Remember the moment you give the steroid, steroid can definitely bring down the itching sensation, but steroid will make you more vulnerable for infections and you'll never get released of this infection. The infection can never get cured. So for that reason, you can go for sertoconazole. Sertoconazole as a single drug is effective to attack against the fungi. Also, it is capable of decreasing the itching sensation. That is why right now the drug which you can love would be sertoconazole. That is why they have asked you this question. Okay, all the following antidepressants drugs are bactericidal expect, except, not expect, it is except. Don't jump into the conclusion. Tell me on the comment box, which drugs can be bacteriostatic? I'm not going to run the poll here. It is also used in AIDS. Yes, correct. You can use it in AIDS also. Yes, what is your answer? Chidaran says E, Nitesh says ethinamide, Shavik says D. Okay, Poonik says streptomycin, Rocky says ethambutol. Here, ethambutol is not here. If at all ethambutol was there in the question paper, I will take ethambutol as a bacteriostatic agent. Rifabutin is always a bactericidal agent. Okay, enough of your answers. No problem. Just wait. Streptomycin is an aminoglycoside. Never have doubts about it. Aminoglycosides are always cidal agent given at appropriate concentration for the appropriate organism. Canamycin is also a powerful cidal agent. Rifabutin comes across the rifampicin family. It is bactericidal in most of the situations and in rare situations, it can be bacteriostatic. So what is the question here? You're looking for a drug who does not have bactericidal activity. That could mean thioesterzone and ethionamide. Ethionamide and thioesterzone are mostly, they are mostly bacteriostatic agents bacteriostatic agents while thioesterzone is purely a bacteriostatic agent. Some students said thioesterzone was asked some students are saying it was not asked. If thioastazone is not asked, ethionamide would be the answer. If thioastazone was asked, then I would prefer thioastazone more than ethionamide and ethambutol. But I will not choose streptomycin, canamycin and rifabutin. All these are very strong bactericidal agents. Rifabutin and rifambicin can block RNA polymerase. It can have. Okay, so ethionamide is not in the options. If ethionamide is not in the options, then my answer would be definitely thioacetazone. Thioestazone is the answer for this question because it's purely bacteriostatic. And in Central Africa, this drug is very commonly used. A lot of questions were integrated with. I'm sorry, I'm not able to understand what is it. Integrated questions, this ends. Yes. See, even in the last meet, a lot of integration happened. Many times, students have been running behind. Students have been running behind notes. So they prefer to take down notes and they want to revise the notes and they want to reproduce the information in the notes. That was actually blocked by NEET 2020 because from now onwards, notes alone will not be enough. You have to understand the concept from the depth. So that is why I'm trying to give you extra information here. Listen carefully. Thioestazone was very commonly used in Central Africa because thioacetazone is extremely cheap. It is extremely cheap compared to all the other drugs. But this thioestazone cannot be used as a single drug. Never a single drug. I'll use a different size. Never used as a single drug. It is always used in combination. Always used in combination. There is one more question about anti-tuberculosis drugs. So I'll come back to that and I'll discuss about the remaining parts also. For the right time being right now, these three are bactericidal. Thioestazone is a bacteriostatic. If ethinamide was asked, then that is also a bacteriostatic agent with minimal amount of bactericidal activity. Let's go for the next question. Gene expert test. In that, it was gen expert. This was the spelling for the commercial preparation. And this was known to do it for RPOB gene. Can you tell me, you're talking about the resistance to what? 
Yes, you're talking about the resistance to water. RPO gene mutation can go for resistance towards water. The mutation will cause resistance towards rifampicin. Excellent, rifampicin. Why am I asking you this? Because the world's most common mutation for tuberculosis would be for the CAT G gene. CAT G gene. What is this CAT G gene important for? It is important for producing catalase and peroxidase. There are many people who know this question very well, but there are still some people who do not know anything about what exactly is happening. So I'm trying to answer for those people. Just listen carefully. CAT G gene mutation is important for INH resistance. So I'm just going to tell you this. If you're OK, please listen to me. If you want to know about this, I'll tell you. Is that OK? I'm speaking about the mutation. Remember, in case of Staph aureus, the most common reason for drug resistance would be conjugation and transduction. In that, transduction will take up 90% of the root. 10% will be taken by conjugation because Staph aureus is known for having a pilus. Now, the concept in case of M tuberculosis, the most common genetic mechanism by which M tuberculosis can become drug resistant is always mutation. So that is why you're concerned about the mutation in terms of tuberculosis. So we concern ourselves about the genes involved in the mutation. Now, there is a gene called as LAM gene. LAM gene is coding for certain proteins which can act as enzymes and those enzymes are involved in the building up of a compound called as lipoarabinomannan. There was a question in PJ Chandigarh where they said a statement, LAM codes for lipoarabinomannan, which is wrong. LAM gene does not code for lipoarabinomannan. LAM gene will code for certain proteins. Those proteins will act as enzymes and those enzymes are involved in the building up of lipoarabinomannan. So the option was almost correct, but was not correct. And lipoarabinomannan is important for preventing the fusion of phagosome with lysosome inside the macrophage. When the MTB has come inside, the lysosome is about to destroy the phagosome. But this lamb will act as a layer here because of which the lysosome will not be able to go near. So the organism becomes more resistant. And when there is a mutation of lamb gene, what happens? Okay. I'm sorry. I do not know what to do, Chidanand. I'm sorry. Now, we are speaking about lamb gene. Lamb gene will actually create a layer called as lipoarabinomannan, which will block the fusion of the phagosome with the lysosome because of which the organism can stay inside the macrophage for a longer time. So imagine if LAM gene is mutated, if LAM gene is mutated, then the fusion of phagosome with lysosome happens, then the macrophage will be able to destroy the organism that is dangerous for the organism. Okay, there are some people who are raising this particular emoticon. Can you please tell me what exactly is your trouble? I would like to explain. There are 15 people who are putting forward this emoticon. I'm really wanting to help you. Can you please tell me what exactly you want? What exactly you want me to explain? I'm explaining in an order. If you can tell me, I can go fast. I'm just waiting for you to tell me which part you want me to repeat. If you want me to repeat, Please put an R. I'll be able to go forward. OK, so what I'm saying, I'll repeat one last time. The most important genes, they'll ask you. Yes, OK. The most important genes, they'll ask you in the next aims also or any other central exams also. Those genes what I'm talking about, LAM gene, CAT G gene, RPOB gene, EMB gene. We are speaking about LAM. If this is the phagosome, there will be a lysosome. Any organism digested by the MTB will actually use the lysosome to come and attach so that phagosome and lysosome will fuse. The lysosomal acidic enzymes will fall on the organism and break them into pieces. That is how the organism can be digested. Now I'm telling you this MTB will be different because MTB brings to the party a different kind of compound called as lipoarabinomannan. When lipoarabinomannan is present around the organism, the lysosome will not be able to come near the phagosome. If lysosome can't come near the organism, lysosome remains silent, phagosome remains silent. Inside the phagosome, the organism can multiply efficiently. Now, if there is a mutation in the LAM gene, it is bad for the organism. Why? Because when LAM is not there, then phagosome and lysosome will fuse. All the enzymes will destroy the organism. The lifespan of the organism is shut down. So, LAM mutation is bad for the MTB. 
but all these mutations are good for MTB because all these can help in the drug resistance. Now, let me tell you about the CAT G gene. When I speak about CAT G, this CAT G codes for the enzymes catalase and peroxidase. And these two are important for what? For oxidative metabolism. Oxidative metabolism. This is a beautiful logic. Just remember, if this is MTB, when INH was brought into MTB, the MTB was killed. INH was initially a very powerful drug. It was killed. After a while, the drug wanted to kill the organisms in huge numbers. The organism started having some kind of intelligence. The organism wanted to understand how exactly it was killed. INH is given as a pro-drug. And when the pro-drug comes inside, it will be turned into an active drug because of the enzymes called as catalase and peroxidase present inside the MTB. MTB will have a CAT-G gene. This gene will be producing catalase and peroxidase. With the help of catalase and peroxidase, when a human being is offering the INH as a pro-drug, the organism itself will convert it into an active drug. That active drug will kill the organism. So the organism became very angry. It understood that this was actually played. So the organism went for auto mutation of cat g the organism went rahul raj pro drug means you're asking me what is a pro drug pro drug means the drug form which is not active the drug form that is not active yet it is waiting to get metabolized after metabolism it becomes an active drug it becomes an active drug the active drug will be having a principle and that principal component will be the one who will create the pharmacological effect. So when it comes inside the body, the active drug is actually formed by the organism itself, right? When the cat G is mutated, there won't be catalase and peroxidase because of which the MTB can survive. That was the activity for. Okay, so if it's told in pharma, let's go forward then. If you do not want to know, it's okay. So RPO gene is meant for rifampicin. Let's go for the next question. Type 4 hypersensitivity is due to, what is the answer? Sharma, it was over Sharma almost. I had said that the catalase and peroxidase enzymes are generally present in the MTB. And if the gene meant for catalase and peroxidase is actually knocked off, then the organism can't produce catalase and peroxidase. When the organism can't produce catalase and peroxidase, then the prodrug who comes inside will not be oxidized because of which there is no activation. So when the drug is not activated, drug is failing. EMB gene is for ethambutol. Okay, now we'll see. Sai Shashank is on top, Rocky is on second, and SK Mahin is on third. Excellent playing people. Okay, now the drug, the answer is cell mediated immunity. Can you tell me, are CMI and DTH one and the same? CMI and DTH, are they one and the same? Yes or no? CMI and DTH, are they one and the same? Yes or no? Almost, yes, yes, yes. So this is the core reason why Many times we make mistakes in the exams because we don't even understand what exactly is the logic between both. CMI means cell mediated immunity. I know you know this, but the most important catchphrase here is it is an immune response. DTH means it is delayed type of hypersensitivity. Hypersensitivity means it is going overboard in the activity. Now let me put it in the right words. CMI will always try to protect you. In this process, the immunity is going to do something good for you by being bad to the organism. I repeat, the CMI is trying to be good to you by being bad to the organism. If a small mosquito is running around my face, I just have to capture the mosquito and throw it. Instead, if you slap my face every time there is a mosquito, the mosquito every time it escapes, I am getting myself slapped. And my hand is least bothered about whether I'm getting slapped or not. My target is to kill the particular microbe. So remember, DTH is nothing but a harmful extension of CMI. DTH is a harmful extension of CMI. When the CMI is least bothered about your process, when the CMI is not bothered about your goodwillness, it is consistently concerned about killing the organism. If killing the organism is the only target, it is least bothered about your safety. That is the point where you call it as DTH. 
is in type 4. No, this is cell mediated immunity. That is the background behind the DTH. Now look at this. If CMI can progress towards DTH, if I look at DTH, I understand CMI is present. But just because CMI is present, I can't be clear that DTH is also present. In some people, CMI can progress to become DTH. If I can visualize DTH, it is understandable that CMI can be present. That is the basis of tuberculin test. In tuberculin test, I'm eliciting a response using DTH response. That DTH response, if it is present, I can understand CMI is present. Now here, what is hypersensitivity called as type 4? It is a granulomatous response. If this is the MTB bacilli, surrounding that in the first layer, the T cells will send in the activated macrophages. Next layer, you'll be having joint macrophages referred to as giant cells. You'll bring in giant cells. After following the giant cells, you'll bring in the T8 lymphocytes. Some of the T lymphocytes will be having the fibroblast. All these things will try to shoot down the organism. In that process, a part of the whole tissue is also destroyed. You can have caseation necrosis in case of tuberculosis. Now, the whole bunch is called as granuloma. And the granuloma was actually brought in by the T8 cells. The T8 cells were activated by T4 cells. So this is a CMI mediated activity. All granulomatous responses are type 4 hypersensitivity response. Why is it hypersensitivity? Because it's going to be bad for you. What is bad? Because you're going to destroy a part of your lung in the form of caseation. Only in chronic conditions, granuloma can happen. Granuloma does not cause chronic conditions. In chronic conditions, only granuloma can happen because granuloma will take more than three weeks of time to happen. So minimal amount of time required for granuloma to happen would be more than three weeks. More than three weeks. Let's go for the next question. Ah, this was a very famous question. Try to answer this. The history belongs to an immunocompromised patient. Anmalutra, the mass is called as granuloma. The mass is called as granuloma. The process that led to the formation, the process that led to the formation of granuloma will be called as delayed type of hypersensitivity, which is called as type 4 hypersensitive reaction. And that granuloma, when it is active, it is called as granulomatous inflammation. Is that okay, Anmol? Hello, Anmol. Are you okay with this? <laughs> okay, now look at the question here. This is the question. I'm starting the poll. See whether you'll be able to answer this. Excellent, Bidyananda. That is a good thought process. Some people said it was cyclospora. Some people said it was cryptosporidium. Some people said isospora. So the first option was globally most commonly causing a CBARO. Okay, no problem. Globally, when they say, when they use the word globally, you can never point or differentiate between that of cryptosporidium and cyclospora because both cryptosporidium and cyclospora are parallel to each other. In the endemic African countries, it can also be isospora. So these are the three major organisms under epicomplexins. Sai Shashank is on top, SK Mahin is on second, Rocky is on third. Listen very carefully. We are discussing about the organism. Yes, yes, wait a minute. When I speak about, see, Dr. Shavik, I'm just giving the answer based on the concept called as globally. Globally important can speak about cryptosporidium, cyclospora, isospora, because Africa can always contribute to the load. But this particular globally has actually been compromised on a statement called as immunocompromised. Remember, these three organisms are capable of causing persistent diarrhea in all the people. But if those people are immunocompromised, then the diarrhea becomes overwhelming. Diarrhea becomes overwhelming and overbearing if the patient is having AIDS. So in AIDS patients, this particular three organisms can be deadly. And how do I know it's cryptosporidium? Because they are saying the cysts of the cryptosporidium are the ones who are four to six microns in size. So based on the size called as four to six microns, I'm having a fair idea that the cyst will belong to cryptosporidium. And if the answer is cryptosporidium, you're looking for Kinyon method. What is the Kinyon method trying to tell you? Anybody? What is the Kinyon method trying to tell you? It is acid fast. So it is acid fast and cold zealance and technique. Excellent. Now tell me, Cyclospora, is it acid fast? Cyclospora, is it acid fast? Just say yes or no. That is enough for me. Kinyon method is a modified version of acid fast staining. Modified version of acid fast staining is Kinyon method. And it is generally used for nocardia versus actinomycetes. Generally, King Yong staining is done for actinomycetes versus nocardia. Nocardia will be positive, actinomycetes will be negative. Cryptosporium is bacteria. No, Rahul Raj. Rahul Raj, who are you? 
cryptosporidium is a protozoa no problem i'm really glad you're asking some basic questions so if you have any other questions also ask me rahul raj so look at this cyclospora is a protozoa it comes under the sporozoan family and they belong to api complex and phylum and all these are known for causing diseases remember cyclospora is not acid fast cryptosporidium is not acid fast none of them are acid fast only the cysts of them are acid fast you tell me human sperm is it acid fast human sperm is it acid fast excellent kribakar human sperm is not acid fast head of the human sperm is acid fast you can't call it as any other animal sperm only head of the human sperm is acid fast the most important statement is head is having an acrosomal layer the acrosomal layer can resist attack by acid that is why it is acid fast so here i'm going to erase all the annotations let me look at a different color most common among them to cause diarrhea is cryptosporidium parvum is not the correct answer oocyst becoming infective immediately after coming out of the stool is the right answer you can search on oocyst you can search on wikipedia you can search on even cdc they have clearly mentioned that when the fecal oocyst comes outside it is immediately effective that is why you should be always scared of the cryptosporidium the cyclospora icospora cyclospora isosporas things are not highly immediately effective but in case of cryptosporidium it is highly effective they are not obligately intracellular they are found outside the lumen that is they are found in the lumen as extracellular organism auto infection is not a property it is based on the fecal fecal oocyst alone wrong about ebola viruses which one is wrong we are going faster come on people let's do it faster if you have any questions please raise it yes correct mr raja and raman yes which is wrong about ebola virus 58% people are capable of giving the right answer they have given the right answer also it is 55 now correct dr shaukik head of head is made up of acrosome that is what is acid fast why first option is wrong in the previous question because cryptosporidium parvum will be slightly trumped by the other organisms like cyclospora and isospora is it okay deepu sandeep yes the right answer here is mosquito transmission mosquito has not been reported to cause the spread ebola and marburg man is the accidental host they said uh, it's okay see bats will be difficult to spread ebola virus bats will be spreading nipa covid and rabies virus when it comes to ebola the value of bats is very less marburg and ebola virus are thready viruses they look like this this is how they look like ah, yes sars also but remember this but sars is not meant for bats sars is man to man now look at this part here the viruses will be thready thread like viruses are called as filoviridae thread like viruses are called as filoviridae and remember the most important thing in case of ebola virus immediate transmission is very very high it is highly contagious why should you know about this point the main was no so communal contact okay now listen to this when we speak about contagiousness if i am a healthcare worker and you are suffering from ebola virus you will be having african hemorrhagic fever which can be seen as hemorrhagic diarrhea also or it can be dysentery also you will be bleeding from all the pores the moment i come near you if you are the first exposure contact and when i come near you as a healthcare professional or a para healthcare professional when i get exposed to it i die so the ebola virus will not decrease in intensity until a geographical area has been completely abolished a lot of people have been destroyed so when you go to the hospital when a first patient has given the infection to the doctor and the doctor treats another patient even though he takes all precautions nosocomial infection is absolutely present so that means direct contact is also absolutely present mosquito transmission is the only thing that is not present in case of ebola virus it has not been proven so among the following which spreads as droplet nuclear infection that needs special precautions is just a variant of this question but this question was also asked give me the answer for this question on the poll people among the following which spreads as droplet nuclear infection that needs special precautions mahendra and mudita i am happy that you are giving the answer but if you give it on the poll you will be able to see where exactly you stand at the end of the poll but your answer here is also fine it's up to you now here there was a small controversy some students said yes there'll be some controversy some students said they asked among the following which one is a droplet nuclear spread they didn't speak about special precautions so if you speak about spreading through droplet nuclei all four are correct 
all four can spread through droplet nuclei. They can be spread as reservoir of Ebola virus can be monkeys. They can be unidentified mammals, which are present unidentified mammals in the forest areas, in the forest areas. So when somebody goes to the forest and comes back to the urban area, he will become the instant carrier and the dying host who can also spread. So there are multiple kinds of reservoirs for the Ebola virus. You just need a live beam to spread the virus. Now look at this. If they speak about all the three bacteria, I mean, sorry, pertussis, that is Bordella pertussis and Cornibacin diphtheriae and measles virus, all three can be spread through droplet nuclei, but you have a proper vaccine against them. And when you can vaccinate, you don't have to go for special precautions. But in influenza, you can take a flu vaccine, but the flu vaccine can never be sure. The flu transmission of Ebola is direct human contact. It can be a sexual contact. It can be a fluid contact. It can be a sweat contact. If the sweat of another person falls on you. If the diarrheal fluid is making a mixture with you, there is a very good standoff. Thank you. Okay. Influenza virus. When you give an influenza vaccine, you are never sure what is the next strain. The next strain can immediately change. There can be an antigenic drift or there can be an antigenic shift. You will never know when it can be dangerous. So that is why you always try to prevent influenza, not just by vaccination, but also by properly covering yourself. For measles, pertussis, diphtheria, you will never be able to cover yourself in such a way that it will be there. Because in India, measles, pertussis, diphtheria are everywhere. But if you give vaccination, vaccination is extremely effective for these viruses, but not extremely effective in case of influenza virus. That's why special precautions are required here. Next question, the patient in question. Tell me whether this question is right. My voice is breaking. Okay. I'll try to refresh the page. Are you okay with this people? If my voice is breaking, it may be because of, I'll just refresh my page. Give me one minute. Okay. Can you see now? Sorry, uh, Upasna. Can you hear now? Okay, so what are the people saying that lactate, alanine, glutamate all were given. Okay, lactate is elevated, alanine is elevated, glutamate is elevated. Excellent. Then anything else in this question? Okay, choline. Choline? What choline? What choline? So Shauvik is saying it is neurocystic sarcosis. Now I'm not concerned about the diagnosis. The diagnosis can be anything. I have I have seen many sources. Many people are equally voting for neurocystic sarcosis and many people are calling for toxoplasmosis also. So I'm just trying to tell you the picture. Tell me whether the picture you saw was picture A or picture B. Which picture did you see? Use your memory. Was it picture A or picture B? See, don't give me answer based on six pictures present here. Take into consideration this and this. Okay. Okay. Magnetic resonance spectroscopy. All these raised. Okay. Okay. Good. That is a good answer. T2 weighted image. Okay. Having ring lesion. Okay. Now, this is the confusion. See, this is not a ring enhanced lesion as such because this is a calcified lesion. So, when they speak about ring enhancement, when they speak about ring enhancement, oh, white CSF was given. Are you sure, Rocky, they gave white CSF in the question? Okay. So when they speak only about ring enhancement, the first choice should be for toxoplasma. Next choice should be for neurocystic sarcosis. But when they say ring enhancement along with calcification, then your answer should be neurocystic sarcosis more than toxoplasma. So for you people to find a better answer, I have brought in all the possible differential diagnoses when they speak about ring enhancing lesion. In ring enhancing lesion, you can think about cerebral abscess, tubercloma, neurocystic sarcosis, metastasis, glioblastoma, subacute infarct, hemorrhage, contusion, demyelination as you see in case of multiple sclerosis, tumor factor demyelination also can show you incomplete ring, radiation necrosis, post-operative change, lymphoma, leukemia, necrotizing leukoencephalopathy after methotrexate. In that particular process, based on all the people who have given me inputs and based on the ring enhancing lesion and based on the identification of the picture as A, the answer here would be neurocystic sarcosis. And this neurocystic sarcosis is capable of causing systemic changes. Magic DR demonic. Okay. Systemic changes. Systemic changes can be brought in by neurocystic sarcosis. And this neurocystic sarcosis can actually cause muscular contraction. 
this muscular contraction if it is there for a very long time you are trying to convert all the pyruvate into lactate using anaerobic glycolysis that is why lactate will be elevated at the same time when the muscles have been extra contracted muscle breakdown happens because of which the muscle protein will be brought down it will be broken down and the brought down protein can be alanine and that alanine can go for deamination and when the deamination happens it becomes pyruvate so whenever the pyruvate is formed it is becoming lactate now this is a chain of cascading events when the muscles are breaking down proteins are broken down when the proteins are broken down alanine increases can you tell me Srimati, I am not audible. How many of you think I am audible? Can you please put a thumbs up if I am audible to you? It is okay. I am sorry, Srimati. I had tried refreshing. I will just refresh one last time. Please don't be angry with me, people. I am just trying to refresh one last time. Okay. Thank you very much. So, I am just trying to repeat the information for somebody who has asked me. When the This is involving both biochemistry and microbiology, right? So, the muscle breaks down proteins are liberated and these proteins are broken down the most important amino acid in the muscle would be alanine i'll write it shall i write the formula if you want only if you want shall i write the formula yes or no okay look at this this is ch3 ch nh2 cooh this is called as alanine now that alanine is trying to become ch3 C double bond O C O O H. I'm so sorry, Munib. I wrote it before you said no, so please forgive me. I'm sorry for troubling you with the structures. So this alanine, if it loses ammonia, then the alanine will turn into a keto acid called as pyruvate. Now the concept here is, if the amino group is taken by alpha ketoglutarate, then what happens to alpha ketoglutarate? I'm saying that alanine loses the ammonia to become pyruvate. Now the ammonia is coming out of alanine, it goes to alpha ketoglutarate, it gives you what? Glutamate. Excellent. That is what is my concern here. So this is a sequence of events. So when the muscles are broken down, alanine increases. Now some of the alanine are trying to become pyruvate. The pyruvate is shifting towards lactate. So lactate increases. At the same time, the amino group has been given to alpha ketoglutarate to become glutamate. So glutamate also increases. And the muscle contraction can be because of acetylcholine. And that is what I think you are trying to tell me. Okay, let's go for the next question. Red color vacutainer is known to contain what? Red color vacutainer is known to contain what? Very good, Sesha. I never thought you'll be able to give the answer. Okay, the answer is given here. For other people, you try answering kaolin zircon two important compounds that have been added. We'll see how many of you can give me the answer. Very good people. Colon, I'm not very sure what exactly you mean. So I would like to wait for the right kind of answer to. I want the complete question to see how it means. I do not know why. Where is colon raising? Is the colon raising in the blood or the CSF? Is it acetyl colon or succinyl colon? I'm not very sure. So I do not want to comment on it. I haven't heard about this in the social media also. First time I'm hearing about colon. Okay. No, I'm really not understanding the MRS pick. I, I have not understood this, so I do not have the information for you. I'll find out the information and give it to you, okay? Because I have not heard about choline at all in case of MRS, in case of the questions in the previous past. Okay, yes, Rahul Raj, Kavalin pectose. No, Kavalin zircon. Okay, now let me tell you, red vacutainer is an indication for clotting. If you want the clot to happen, what am I looking for? Am I looking for plasma or I'm looking for serum? Which one am I looking for? Can you tell me this? If I'm looking for clotting, what am I looking for? Plasma or serum? Vishal and Rocky, Vishal and Rahul, please understand. Clotting means you have taken up the fibrinogen. So blood means RBC, WBC and all the proteins put together. Plasma means you're having all the proteins, including albumin, globulin and fibrinogen. Serum means plasma minus fibrinogen so the clotting has happened fibrinogen has been taken up so serum is what you're looking for so red vacutainer is also called as serum vacutainer you're trying to increase the clotting and you're using these kind of inert substances like kaolin and zircon whenever blood comes in contact with sharp objects like kaolin and zircon clotting starts so clot activator can be added red vacutainer may not have anything also in spite of not having anything also you can actually get the serum 
Yes, to obtain the serum, we get the red vacutina. Vitamin deficient causing neonatal seizure. This is a biochemistry question. I accidentally added it. I'm sorry. I'll be discussing this in YouTube also. But for the first time, I'll tell you this. The active form of pyridoxin is pyridoxal phosphate. The active form of pyridoxin is pyridoxal phosphate. And this pyridoxal phosphate is the coenzyme for decarboxylase enzyme. See, Tejas, we are not concerned about whether which specific clotting factor is present. Tejas, I'm telling you that if at all I want purely the serum, I don't want any kind of coagulation factors, then I try to lock the coagulation factors by activating clotting. To activate clotting, you don't have to add anything at all. The mere fact that no anticoagulant has been added, the mere fact that no citrate, no EDTA, no heparin is added, it will automatically give you, it can automatically give you the coagul coagulum. Okay. Yes, I'm telling you. It is decarboxylase, not pellagra. No, no, not in pellagra. Just listen, listen for a minute. Pyridoxal phosphate will be supporting decarboxylase. Now, this decarboxylase is trying to convert glutamate into GABA. GABA is a very in, important inhibitor neurotransmitter. And that inhibitor neurotransmitter, if it is less, because pyridoxin is less, decarboxylase action is less, conversion of glutamate to GABA is less, because of less inhibitor neurotransmitter, there is excess activation. That is the reason for seizures. Now for the question about pellagra, please understand, in case of pellagra, you have niacin deficiency. And niacin deficiency is known to cause diarrhea, dementia, and dermatitis. Dementia suppresses the mentation. It suppresses the mentation and cerebral activities. Cerebral activity speaks about the higher thought process. Higher thought process comes down drastically. It is not about the excess activation. That is why it will not be that. Okay, let's move forward. Antibody testing for COVID-2 depends on. Can you give me an answer? Beriberi is known for causing CNS, that is CNS beriberi, but that is seen as either encephalopathy or psychosis. It is not seen as seizures. What is the answer, people? Antibody testing for COVID-2 depends upon what? Excellent. So it is not B, it is speaking about time of infection. Understood. So what is what do you think is the best answer here? This question is poorly framed. If anybody can make a better framing of the question, you are in welcome. You are welcome to change the question if you want to. I do not know what exactly the question because the question is not understandable to me. I'm not able to understand the question properly. So if you can change the question, I'll be OK with that. But please remember when I'm trying to go for COVID-19 serology, you can follow the same principles of IgM and IgG. If you see IgM, current infections can be noticed. Current infections can be noticed. And that is after the incubation period of 14 days. But if at all you see IgG, past infection also can be noted. But please understand, IgG in COVID-19, not effective like the IgG of other viruses for unknown reasons. Please understand. Every, I'll tell you one simple logic here. If at all you're suffering from COVID-19 today and possibly you require in the next, you, you recover in the next 20 days. On the 27th day, again, you get net is low. My net is very good. I am just checking it. It is 100 Mbps. Vidyananda, my network is 100 Mbps and I have used only the cable. So if at all the video is not functioning properly, please exit and then come back inside. You will be able to do it. OK, so 27th day, for example, today you're getting the infection on 20th day, you got recovery on 27th day. Again, you have an infection. There is no guarantee that you are infected by the same strain of SARS-CoV-2 because SARS-CoV-2 is showing a lot of strains. SARS-CoV-2 is showing a lot of strains and there is a new strain in Tamil Nadu, Chennai in the last four days. In the last four days, a very new strain has come up, which is I-436. And this particular strain has actually killed almost four people because of that. So on that basis, when I give the serum, currently infected can be seen asymptomatic. Past infection can be seen asymptomatic, but it will not be able to tell you whether it is effective or not. So no proper answer is available for this question because the question itself is improper. Let's go for now. As of now, you have six strains. There are two new strains. OK, now answer this question. Second line anti TB drug is which one? I'm not going for the poll. Give me an answer here. Second line anti TB drug is which one? So you're saying A or B, A or B, A or B. 
I am not able to know the D option. If you know the D option, please let me know. But please be sure before you give me the answer because many people will trust your answer. INH was there. I trust you. I can add INH. If INH was there, it is first line antibody plus treatment. Okay, so most of you has given us answer as B. Excellent. Remember, vancomycin is not even a drug of choice for tuberculosis. Do not even choose it. So your choice is between A and B. To answer this question, the one simple answer is you go for HRZE. H stands for INH. R stands for rifampicin. Z stands for pyrazinamide. E stands for ethambutol. Why did we have ethambutol in the previous section? Ethambutol is a bacteriostatic agent. INH and rifampicin are bacteriocidal agents. Pyrazinamide is in between both. Now, there is another option called as S. HRZE, yes. Streptomycin is right now considered as first line treatment. So the answer here is ethionamide. Let me show you in Indian government what are the different things taken for second line treatment. Why would you go for second line drug treatment? Only when there is a multi-drug resistance for the first line drugs, you go for second line treatment. Multi-drug resistance for first line, you go for second line treatment. Levofloxacin, moxifloxacin, bidaquilin, delamanid, and linozolid are the classical second line drugs of choice. Then you think about canamycin, ethionamide, ethambutol, cyclosurin, sodium amino salicylate, pyridoxin to prevent INH toxicity, canamycin, levofloxacin, and rifabutin are all second line anti TB drugs. This information is for you to prepare for the next exam that is upcoming. So I'll show you once again who are the second line treatment levofloxacin and amoxifloxacin, who are ciprofloxacin or furopilone group of drugs, delaminate and ilinazolid. Caramycin, ethionamide, ethambutol, cyclosurin, amino salicylate, pyridoxin, and rifabutin. All these are, sir, but streptomycin can't be given throughout the injection, through injection route. So it got changed to second line, but not sure. That is the reason they did not take streptomycin as the first line treatment in the initial stages. Now, because of immense second line drug, they're trying to bring in second line drug into a first line equation. But the better answer for this question will always be ethionamide because ethionamide is definitely not a property of first line treatment. That is why I'm choosing ethionamide before that. All. Ethanol was given. I'm not sure what you're saying. Let's go for the next question. Okay, let me tell you the first line treatment. Streptomycin, rifampicin, isoniazid, pyrazinamide, ethambutol. And streptomycin is given as injection. That is why I'm telling you in Indian government, I have taken it from the Indian survey data. These are the drugs that are offered to the patients in a form of a sheet. Yes, these are the multi-drug resistant anti-TB drugs. Amoxicillin, capriomycin, clarithromycin, moxifloxacin, clofazimin are all second line treatment. I mean, they all are drugs for XDR-TB. Okay, in case of thinking about ethambutol, ethambutol can actually be, see, ethambutol here is first line. Here, when I spoke about ethambutol here, this ethambutol is an altered dosage which comes in the second therapy. SD, the ethambutol can be having multiple dosages. This dosage is meant for the second line treatment. Otherwise, it's a part of first line treatment also. Okay, answer this question, which... Uh, let us not discuss about the regimen. I won't be able to finish all the regimens. I'm just giving you an indication for which drugs are which one. Okay. Which are the following that spreads as droplet nuclear measures to be given? Okay, I'm done with this. Answer this question. Diphtheria vaccine is which type of vaccine? Go for the poll people. Can you please close the door? Excuse me. Can you please close the door? Excellent. 80% of people have given the right answer. Very good people. Thank you very much. So diphtheria is actually given as a toxoid. Enough. We'll stop the question here. Diphtheria is given as a toxoid. What is a toxoid? You pick up the exotoxin. Tell me which one can be taken as a toxoid, exo or endo. Which one is preferable for toxoid? Which toxin is preferable for toxoids? Is it exo or endo? Excellent. You all will choose exo. Why? Endo is made up of lipopolysaccharide. It is a very poor antigen. Exo is made up of enzymes. Enzymes are made up of your proteins. Proteins are the strongest antigens. Proteins are the strongest antigens. You tell me, if I want to go for a vaccine, will I choose a strong antigen or a weak antigen? Yes, tetanus also. Very good. Tell me, which one will I choose? strong antigen or a weak antigen i will choose a strong antigen so i take up a toxin 
Now this toxin will be chemically treated. I repeat, the toxin can be chemically treated or it can be heat treated. When I do that, the toxin, just remember this. How many questions left? Seven, six questions left. Are you okay, Maria? Imagine if this is a protein who has a tertiary structure, this tertiary structure will be destroyed because of either heat or chemical activity. When the tertiary structure is lost, then catalytic function of the protein is lost. When the catalytic function is lost, it is no more an enzyme. It is losing the toxicity. So toxicity is lost, but antigenicity is retained. Antigenicity is retained. This is the property of understanding a toxoid. All toxoids are very powerful vaccines because I have destroyed the toxic component, but I have retained the antigenic component. Okay, now this question was incomplete. Anybody knows about this question? Anybody knows about this question? Which of the following is wrong about Wheels disease? Wheels disease is the severe condition caused in case of leptospira interrogans ictero-hemorrhagica ictero -hemorrhagica. okay you can see them under light direct microscopy you don't need negative staining negative staining is a property you see specifically for triponema pallidum triponema pallidum okay emgh caused by spirochete yes Caused by spirochete, absolutely true. Wheels disease is definitely caused by a spirochete. Who are the three major spirochetes? Leptospira, Triponema, and Borrelia. Cryptococcus was given. Okay, you tell me people. Yellingosin, Mekola, Johnson, Harris medium is the medium for Leptospira. Who are the other media? Korthoff's medium and Fletcher's medium. Every question I'm trying to cover it in such a way that you will not be in a position to look for any other source for information. This should be sufficient. That's what I'm trying. Korthoff's medium or Fletcher's medium are the three major media for Leptospira. EMGH is the best. So for negative staining of say cryptococcus, not a problem. Okay, look at this. Hellingos and Mekolo Johnson Harris medium is given. It is right answer. Leptospira, that is right answer. Korthoff's and Fletcher's are the other media. It can be seen on light of Macmax is also right answer. But some people said this was the picture given. Just look at the picture here. This was the picture given. They said they spoke about acute stage. They spoke about convalescent stage and they spoke about a stage where you can have uveitis and interstitial nephritis and leptospira can be present in blood, CSF and urine in the first week. Let me make it very simple for you. I'll just take one minute of your time. Please be with me when I have. This was another question. OK, no problem. We'll discuss both the question together because the common organism is leptospira will have less amount of time to be spent on it. Is that OK? So leptospira interrogans ictero-hemorrhagica can cause simple leptospirosis or can cause a very serious disease called as wheels disease now this wheels disease can have two major stages first stage second stage first stage is called as leptospiremia first stage is called as leptospiremia you want me to refresh i'll do it There are many people who are saying no, I am understanding it, but there are some people who want to learn, right? We all can be kind to each other. We don't have to attack each other. That's why I try to do it for them. Sorry if at all I hurt you. Leptospiremia is the first stage where you have the virus both in the blood and CSF. So both in the blood and CSF, you can find the organism. Second stage is called as what is meningismus? There are signs and symptoms of meningitis, but there is no actual meningitis. In that stage, antibodies will start happening. So antibodies can be found, but it is not actually the organism found in the blood and CSF. These are the two stages of Wheels disease. This is just I wanted to discuss about Leptospira. If you have any questions, you can ask me. Okay, this was a confusing question. Many people said controversial statements. They said they spoke about a patient. They spoke about a resident. And they compared both the patient and the resident they what they said so i do not know what exactly happened so if at all hbs antigen is negative the patient is absolutely okay and if he has anti hbs antibody titers more than 0.9 i repeat here more than 0.9 international units per liter then you will definitely be okay with that 
Rahul Raj, please refresh your screen, exit and then come back again. The right answer is nothing needs to be done for the patient. Actually, nothing is not correct. The best answer would be continuous monitoring. Continuous monitoring of the patient can be done. Remember, if a patient has anti-HBS antibody, he is protected. Let's go for the last three questions. Okay, female with active recurrent genital warts, but her husband does not have a wart. What will be the advice given to you? This was the question. Go for the poll people. Last two questions, last three questions. Come on, people. Female with active recurrent genital warts, but her husband is also having what? What is the advice for him not to have warts? This was the question. Okay, 32% of the people have given the right answer. It means 68% are wrong. Female with active recurrent genital warts, but her husband is not having warts. What is your advice against the warts? What is the advice you give to prevent? Uh, Nitesh, I have not been allowed to do it. I have to finish by one hour, but I'm taking already 10 minutes. I'll be impinging on the other faculty who's coming up. So let me talk about the strains on a YouTube session. You can come and watch me on the YouTube session. The right answer here is don't involve in sexual intercourse when the active lesion is present without a condom. Without a condom. Don't involve in a sexual intercourse without a condom if there is an active lesion. Do not go for any kind of antiviral therapy. No antiviral therapy is effective. I repeat, no antiviral therapy is good for warts. You can go for surgical treatment or dermatological treatment or cryotherapy to bring down or eliminate the warts, but you can't give any kind of antiviral treatment to go it. Imiquimod can be given. Podophyllin can be given. Imiquimod, immunomodulator can be given. Podophyllin can be given, but antiviral drugs are useless. Is this due to HPV? Yes. When they say recurrent genital warts, it is definitely because of HPV. So it's a sexually transmitted disease. Wrong about Ebola virus is already done. Okay, this was the picture. Fatahia Haris, I have tried my best to refresh it whenever you ask me. If I refresh once again, they'll actually slap my face. So please refresh yours. Go back and come inside. Okay. So the answer is Schistosoma mansoni. There are many people who are speaking about Japonicum, but the gold standard is that if you speak about periportal fibrosis, I repeat, if there is a periportal fibrosis happening in the liver and that is because of schistosoma mansoni, you can also call them as bilharziasis. Blasiasis, the picture might have been different. SD, I have not seen the picture. Nobody has sent me the picture. So I just put forward a retro peritoneal fibrosis case here. This is about the liver going for peripheral fibrosis. So I'm just showing you, if at all they speak about peripheral fibrosis, think about schistosomiasis. And what exactly has happened? There is a remodeling of the extracellular matrix and excessive deposition of collagen, primarily by hepatic stellate cells. Please show the picture of liver again. This is a case of bilarziasis. Okay. And what is the pathology here? Remodeling of the extracellular matrix. ECM remodeling happens. Deposition of collagen happens. Collagen deposition increases and hepatic stellate cells are increasing along the branches of portal tract. Done. HIV central surveillance is not included in India for which one? This is an SPM question. I just try to add this. Come on. Mansone is in the superior mesenteric vein. Japonicum is in the inferior mesenteric vein. Come on, people. What is your answer? Okay. Now, do not worry about what my answer is. The answer might differ between the microbiologist and the PSM person. My answer would be sex clinic attendant. Attendant means the one who is accompanying the patient. The one who is accompanying the patient need not always be having a sexual relationship with the patient. Generally, a partner may come, may not come. But in terms of awkwardness, in terms of awkwardness, 
generally the partner does not come with the patient so the father mother child friend somebody can come they are not high risk people for sentinel surveillance antenatal female long distance truck driver single migrant female migrant males are the ones who are high risk people so sentinel surveillance is done for those people so with this i have completed all the questions that were given to me and for those people who have been very patient with me let me tell you one simple announcement i'll be coming up with a youtube session i'm coming up with a youtube session where i'll be discussing biochemistry mcqs if you have any questions for me on the session you can ask me and i'll be discussing about how to understand the structures most of the time i have been working on how to make the structures intelligent and i have been putting up all the structure based quiz questions also and one question about chondroitin sulfate had come i felt very happy because most of my students had answered it so i'll teach you how to do it and if at all you prescribe for this you want to subscribe for an academy you can use the code dr asm hyphen yt or you can just use dr asm and for all the people who have been very patient to be sitting with me thank you very much if you have time i do not know i'll just put it forward you will be having enough notifications in that on the youtube itself just follow my youtube channel i mean follow me on the youtube place and for all the other people who have liked my class please put a thumbs up if you like it thank you very much because if you put a thumbs down it will actually be very demotivating for me to do further further kind of free sessions okay thank you very much have a good day you can download the pdf file after 30 minutes after 30 minutes Unmol, you can download the PDF file after 30 minutes. You can, okay, for those people who want to see my channel, you can search for Meenakshi Sundaram AS. Meenakshi Sundaram AS on an academy on YouTube and also on Telegram. You can join my group if at all you wish to have any kind of notifications coming to you. YouTube, please search for an academy Meenakshi Sundaram AS. You'll be seeing my videos. From there, you can go to the link where you can follow my other videos also as a playlist. Okay, thank you very much. Have a good day. Have a great weekend. Bye bye. Good night. I wish the best for you. I really want to be successful. If you're successful, I'll be successful. Thank you. Bye bye.